A lot of people think that I think that all of history is a lie, and I don't. I think a lot of it is true, up until the 1800s, up until the most recent great cataclysm, and then history was falsified. The whole industrial revolution is the jump-starting of the prior world. Anyways, thanks for being here, and welcome. Now, a lot of people want to say, what about the Native Americans? Wouldn't they have stories about cities and prior people? And yes, they do. They called them the Anasazi, and they did not look at them favorably. They were a people that built cities and destroyed themselves. Next, I want to show you a picture that I've titled the most important photo in the world. That's it. Just the most important photo in the world. So where is this photo? I don't even know. Let's find out. It is the Deerawar Fort. Boom. Massive. Really looking like these could have been smokestacks. And it looks like this is in Pakistan. Down here, in the middle of nowhere. We have Pakistan and a hotel room for about 13 bucks, not too far away. Here's a little nicer one for 56, with a spa. Okay, so Ford in Pakistan. Here's another one that kind of reminds me of it. Really remarkable. Again, reminding me of a kiln. And there's a reason why I called this the most important photo in the world. What we can see is this awe-inspiring brick. I mean, just so much brick. There's probably a few million bricks in just one of these sections. Am I exaggerating? Is this not a million bricks? Normally, I would love to get into the history of this. What year? How many people populated the area? Where did the bricks come from? and discuss the impossibility of a primitive people to build something like this. Something like this makes it so obvious that whoever came before us was 10,000 times more advanced than we were. We have no explanation for something like this. Everything they will tell us about this will be a lie. Even the fact that it's a fort. That is not my point. None of that is my point right now. There is one part of this photo that sheds light on the entire realm, and there's one reason I've titled this the most important photo in the world. Before I tell you why, take a quick guess. What we can see is one, two, three, four, five cylindrical structures. And we just saw that there's a bunch of them. A bunch. But in this particular photo, what we see is this one in the back has turned to shit. Has turned to mud. Resembles everything in the southwest that we are told is natural. Only the faintest husk remaining. And really, when you see what it looked like in its glory, compared to what it looks like after being plasmified, everything begins to make sense in this realm. Hence why this is the most important photo in the world. This one cylinder that got hit either from within or without reveals everything. And sometimes things can just turn into what look like rocky mountains and rock slides and shale. As we can see here, all the brick has busted off here and slid. And we could have entire mountains and canyons resembling this. But then there's the next level, where you don't even get remains. You don't even get things that look like stone anymore. The brick can turn to a stone-like rubble, or it can turn to mud. And this is the mud. And all this BS about ancients building with mud couldn't be further from the truth. Mud is the condition that the reset renders brick into. There is no mud. And now consider a mud flood. 
now considering what we see here, imagine certain parts of the realm getting hit so hard that everything is rendered to mud. And in some cases, like we see here, it may still hold its form, but anymore, and it just gets washed away, unrecognizable to future people. And this shows how the reset is selective and sporadic, similar to lightning, kind of a Russian roulette. And forgive me, I don't know if that's offensive to anyone. This is a puzzle piece that I've been waiting for. This to me is proof. This is the most perfect evidence one could have. Here we see that this is clearly part of this structure, thus making it the perfect proof for what brick can become. And not just some shitty brick. This is the most amazing brick. Who does this? Who lays brick this way? So intricate. So much detail. And so massive. Suitable for a massive and great people. This is no fort to defend against warring tribes. Savages. Again, the entire southwest. Most parts of America, most parts of the world, the most uninhabited regions, wastelands, were former cities. The more wasteland, perhaps the greater the city was. And really, most of them looking like they're in good shape. I'd like to see another picture like this one. So here I've just dropped us down on the Google Earth in Pakistan. Let's have a little look at what we can see. Here we go, and we see the fort. Right in the center, all these roads meet here, really looking like an old city. And again, not something primitive. Like, this is probably not a very high-tech city today. Fascinating. So here's a little mini-mart, the Jazz Mini-Mart. Unbelievable. This little dump and these beautiful structures in the background. Here's another store. I think this is the merchandise here. And here's a mini mart. No picture. And this looks like a nice little store. The proud owner. Looks like he has Pepsi back here. And again, most of these towers of brick look to be in good shape. But as we saw, some of them have turned to mud. And I'm trying to figure out which ones those are. Here, just like everywhere, we see more buried. Here's three of these cylinders buried, probably the outer wall of this massive building. And if we look carefully, we do see an outer perimeter of this structure. And here they offer up some pictures. Boom. Here we go. So it's safe to say we're dealing with brick once again. These are not mud bricks that have been formed into archways. This is the same thing. This is the same structure. This is just on the outskirts. Any more, and it resembles just mounds of mud. And all of this on the ground is the remains of brick. All of this that we see everywhere is the remains of brick. Now, I don't think that all mountains are melted brick. I've said it before. I think the giant ones over 13,000 feet are in fact ancient trees. And here's an example of that. This photo was taken by Foresty Forest, and this is in Canada, and no doubt part of a tree. And here is Foresty hiking up here. All trees at this level. But this, this is a structure or part of it that has turned to mud. This is also brick turned to mud. Let's see if they let me put the man down. Yes, we're in. So here we go. Here are the remains of the old world. You can see where brick meets mud. And this isn't just some shitty mud brick. All of this has been cooked. Just totally cooked out. And we're gonna try to find that one cylinder. Look at this. So here giving us an idea of what the tops may have looked like. And here we go, and there she is. Oh, glory. We have a pipe sticking out of the side right here. Look at this. Unbelievable. I rest my case. What more can I say? How much more proof is needed? Now does everything make sense? Does this help for those of you who are on the fence? Now can you see the realm that we're living in? 
all the places me and Chief walk around in Utah. And I could tell which one it was, because it was so much smaller than the other ones. And our evidence is not going to be found in America. With the amount of money they've put in the park systems, everything has been erased. But out here in Pakistan, everything is just waiting for us. The old world is just waiting to be discovered. So here we are in a little city, a pretty big city actually, not too far away from where we just were. Now we are in Uzbekistan, and when we're dealing with all these Stan countries, in my opinion we're dealing with Tartaria, because this was their neck of the woods, from what we can see on the old maps. And here I've titled this Dome City, and we actually see a city in ruins, but actually very high tech at one time. All cities seem to be the same. You can always find this point. You're typically gonna have a train station and a train track, as we see here. Train and station, there she is. A beauty, complete with fountains. And then we'll run into a grand terrace or boulevard running like a circuit usually complete with fountains every so often looks like a lot of the fountains have been removed and we continue here was a fountain now in disuse this boulevard doesn't even look like it's being used today or maybe nobody has cars here and we continue down the boulevard some kind of hub and then another circular fountain area, now half buried. But you see my point, very advanced engineering here. Now unappreciated. And if we follow it to the end, we see a massive structure that used to sit here, now being destroyed. And if it's in the middle of nowhere, a massive building will be destroyed, but it will be called a mining pit. And you see the resemblance of a mining pit but this actually was a glorious structure, as it's at the end of this boulevard. Let's look at a few pictures of what looks like nothing. There you go. Here we can see the walls, some towers remaining, and soon they'll probably just wipe all of this out. So we just see the towers here again, and just the outer wall standing. Everything on the inside has been demolished, as you can see here. Still a lot to be explored and excavated, but I'm sure we won't have the opportunity. Here we go again, peeking through the tents used in modern times. Very ironic. And what's going on over here is similar to what happened in North America a little over a hundred years ago. Just tearing things down, repurposing. This is probably a brick business here. One site could produce an industry, be it bricks or other building materials. And real, real quick, I just wanted to show you the Dome City. I called it the Dome City. We see this Ichan Kala Fortress. And really, the fortress is just massive. It's actually this whole section here, the whole section. And you can see a similar fort pattern all around it here, like we were just looking at with the most important photo in the world. And here, much of it is in worse condition. But equally, a lot of it, especially within the city walls, has been preserved. And it's a great study that lends much evidence to this mystery. So that's it for the good part of the video. This next part will be a little off topic. Kind of a Hollywood conspiracy. Here I'm laying concrete and doing a pretty poor job of it. For whatever reason, I think it's important to look at other things. And that's what this next segment is. All I could think about while I was doing this was how it was done in the 1800s. This was delivered to me from a concrete plant only three miles away. So now for the crazy segment. I guess this segment is going to be a Hollywood conspiracy. I don't know. I woke up at five o'clock this morning. I felt like I did when I was a child. You wake up at five o'clock maybe. Nobody's awake. You watch cartoons. I drank a bunch of coffee. Watched random off-grid videos. And then I thought I'd check in with 
the German in Venice. And the German in Venice made a video showing the scene of this actress, Anne Hetchy, or Hetch, and the crash that she was involved in. Really interesting. First, it shows her flying down the road at 100 miles an hour, a small road, and then she slams into a house. Here's what her car looked like when they pulled it out of the house. And there's very little news on this. There was one small non-media video, besides the German in Venice, talking about this. And I can't help but see truth. I don't even care, but whatever I look at, truth begins to cry out. I think I'm just gonna talk and maybe fill in the video clips later. She flies down the road, or the car does. We don't see anybody in the car when it's flying down the road, and slams into the house. Almost kills the lady inside and her dogs, we're told, but they survive. It takes them almost an hour to pull this car and Anne out of the car. While it's burning in the house, there's a hole in the roof of the house. Neighbors that were interviewed said flames were shooting a hundred feet high. And when I saw the car, I just thought, what is this? Why this kind of damage? So then they pull Anne out, and there's footage. There's helicopter footage from above. And they're pulling somebody out in what looks like a body bag. And suddenly, she rises from the dead, struggling, resisting. Not the kind of thing somebody would do if somebody was caring for you, talking into your ear, telling you everything's going to be okay. No, this looks like she's resisting. And they quickly throw her in the ambulance. One thing to remark is she looks perfectly clean. Clean. Not one bit of soot on this woman. Now it sounds like I'm talking about the lime kilns. No soot on her. She's all in white, and she doesn't look like she's been pulled out of this burned car. Not a single sign. This door doesn't look like it can open, and the front tires are just gone, melted. It seems unlikely if plumes of fire and smoke are shooting out of the house a hundred feet through the top of the roof, that a woman could sit in the car for 40 minutes plus and survive. Just the smoke alone would do someone in. Just this crash would do somebody in. And yet they pull a body out without any soot. There's a beautiful rainbow out here. And she has no soot or blood on her? I mean, she looks absolutely fine. Like they could have just taken her off of the stretcher. And pretty soon, she's taken away. We're told she goes into a coma. And pretty soon, her organs are donated and the rest is history. Now, if I was her, I would hope to God that somebody would put these pieces together and see that something is unusual here. Now, I recognize the actress, but I've never seen any of her work before. The only reason I found this was, again, watching the German in Venice. My sister lives in Venice, and I like to get a local perspective of what condition the city is in. And for the most part, it's a shithole and getting worse. I don't understand why people would pay so much to live in such filth. And very simply, this seems to me like a perfectly staged event. Was she made to disappear? For better or for worse? I think so. And here we can see, again, what looks like more of a body bag and restraints. Really tight. And kind of looks like a done deal. I mean, just really wrapped up tight like a burrito. And then, and then, here we go. Now all of a sudden, getting up out of the body bag and resisting and flailing her arms around. And I want you to notice, no blood or soot. Looking sweaty, but not like someone who's been pulled out of this car that's been burning in a burning house for almost an hour. No. Pulling her out in a body bag and then having her flail her arms around only to be stuck back in the ambulance and to eventually be pronounced dead. And here we can see her car fly by at 100 miles an hour. Here we see the top of the house burning and the car that she was in. Here again another view of the car and here again 
her getting up and being very clean very very clean and very okay if you remember the movie the princess bride she is certainly mostly alive not mostly dead and this is just very alarming and here again we can see the burning not only cooking the car out but cooking the house out here the debris on the car unbelievable i mean she should be blackened she should look like a smoked marshmallow here is a look at the front of the car come on was anybody sitting here i don't think so come on nobody survives this kind of crash and then this kind of burning and gets pulled out clean in a body bag wakes up and starts freaking out and then is pronounced dead i mean what kind of shit show are we dealing with here and this is just getting brushed away very quickly. When I did a search on this, everything indicated that she was still alive. And then I changed the search parameters to most recent and very quietly now indicating that she has passed. Well, I guess that's it for today. I thank you all for joining me. Do have a blessed day. Thank you, Patreons and all other forms of support. I love you all. And I'll see you next week.